YouTubers. Uh, sorry I haven't done a video in a while. Um, I've been really busy at work, working seven days a week right now because it's busy season. Um, but still been doing upgrades. Um, this is the new 135. It's all set up. Uh, I took down the 40. It's not there anymore. So, yeah, this is the new project. Um, here's the tank. It's got put a custom overflow boxes in it. I made both overflows on it. Um, I have, for the plumbing work, I have 2 inch PVC pipe for the overflows. There's behind the tank. Then 1 inch returns. Right now I have my 400 watt metal halide running. I have the fan on it because it's, it's really close to the water. It keeps my water pretty nice and warm. Um, my LEDs I'm trying to work on because they're messing around on me. I don't know what happened to them. I had them on for like a week and then <coughs> uh, they started flickering and doing all this weird shit. I don't know what the hell happened. So, if you guys have these, any of these, these are from uh, Rapid LED. I bought these. and uh, uh, They're all wired up right. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the ballast or the dimmer switch or whatever fried out, but yeah. If you got any, uh, if you know what's wrong with them, let me know. It's going to be really nice. I have um, a whole little uh, lifter pump or whatever you want to call it. Took up the bolt overflows on each side just in case this little pump just pumps or sucks out the air or whatever in the overflows. Um, here's the other side. Overflows a lot higher on this one because I guess I didn't seal it well enough along the side because the front of it got pushed in one night. I woke up to a bunch of water on my floor because it wanted to drain the tank down here because it was down here. So, yeah, that kind of sucked. Um, as you see, I'm trying to work on my LEDs. I don't know if it's the ballast or if it's the dimmer switch that fried out. So this is the old dimmer switch that came with it. And I went to Radio Shack and got a new one, but it's not working. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, so far, um, this is it. Show you a little bit what's going on. And if you notice, this right here, that is my two minute or less water change. <laughs> I should get that to in a minute. So, so here's the sump. I got the two overflows coming down in here. As you can see, a lot of water movement. I'll show you the pump. Uh, and it goes in here it's my little refugium got my protein skimmer this uh i like this protein skimmer it's really nice it's rated for 300 gallons and this is a uh, hundred and i don't know probably like 150 gallon maybe with the sump and everything but yeah there's the plumbing that is for the left side overflow there's my refugium lights over this tank uh, got mangroves back in there. Pretty nice. Got my al macro, excuse me, uh, macro algae and all that stuff in there. Um, so yeah, and then it goes in here. Then this is my little filter, so nothing gets sucked into the pump. So I do have this tank drilled that goes to the pump. Obviously, you can see, um, because I did. When I was doing, when I first started doing this, I uh, put my little thermometer in there and the pump sucked it in and yeah, that was not cool. I had a bunch of mercury or whatever hikes inside these thermometers these days. Go all over my tank so I had to drain the whole thing <laughs> and clean it all out. But yeah, so I just put this little filter thing in here so it doesn't happen over again. Take you to the other side. So this is return pump. You got a ball valve here with a union so you can take it off and goes into the pump. This is the pump right here. This is rated for 1200 gallons an hour. This is the little giant something. I forgot what it was. And then it goes up to another union so I can take the whole pump out if I need to. Ball valve and then up to the back and then right here goes into an X 
this is my water change. When I want to change my water, I flip this on. It goes all the way through the back, out the side of the tank. And then I take this little piece here that I need. I would put a five gallon bucket here at the bottom of it, put this in the bucket, screw this on like so, then all the water is going to drain into the five gallon bucket. And then all I got to do is just come over, take my other bucket, and just take my return, my little extra pump that I have, and just put it right back into the system. It takes two minutes or less to do a water change. It's pretty awesome. And then you got my top off one right here. It's just got a little, it's got a flexible tube inside of it that runs down into that bucket, this Home Depot bucket right here. There's a little pump in it. And then so it does. I just got a pump in here. Let's see, I don't know if you can see in there. There's a little water pump. All I do is I just come in here and plug it in for the side. And then uh, I got a little fan in here because I have my ballast right here for the metal halide and I want to keep that nice and cool and then also this pump is hot like if I don't have this fan here and I want like this just to touch the pump my hand would be burning right now and I'd be screaming because it gets so hot but right now it's not even that bad it's totally cool so here's all my wiring for this crazy tank this whole power strip right here is all off this timer that's for my lights and everything, and I want to put my LEDs on there once I get them. So, cause this is this one right here is for the fan on the metal halide, and this is the one that goes down to the ballast. So, it's not too bad. Uh, I'm loving it right now, and then also I have I couldn't find any keys, so I wanted to put a key here so that it can just go out. And I couldn't find any keys at the Home Depot I went to that's right by my house. So I just put an X and I was like, alright, that's fine, I'll just get a little cap. And then if I want to add like a UV sterilizer or something, I can just throw it on and whatnot. So it's pretty nice. Um, got all the wires all like tucked away so no water splash or anything. And then obviously this, this is the rubber line I was telling you about. I lost track of mine while I was saying and just goes into the back and drill a little hole in the lid for the bucket so it keeps it all sealed and everything then this is the other kind of, this one kind of drips a little bit this is the plumbing for the right side of the overflow as you can see these are massive pipes like this is underneath my tank this is chaos in here with all these pipes and yeah, this doing this two inch overflow on here cost me about $150 just to do because if you guys know, these ball valves right here are probably, I think they were like $17, $18, $19 like that for these two inch ball valves. It's nuts. And yeah, so these are my fish. Um, they're all doing pretty good. Got about five chromuses in there. Got my three clownfish. A blue hippo tang. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Kind of a little sick. Work outside all day. Uh, my two pajama cardinals are in the back. And I have a six line wrasse in here, but I have no idea where he is. He's always in and out of the rocks, hides all in the rocks. So, kind of a little update on my corals. These are the pulsating zinnias. If you haven't noticed, they're like huge. It used to be like that guy, now they're like this. So, I got like a minute left, my thing's counting down. And my zoos, got all my zoos in there. My, uh, what is it called? Yeah, whatever. You know what that is. Bird's nest, frags, green stars, hammerheads, more green stars, and these crazy waving hand beanies or whatever they're called. All these Kenya trees that you see in my tank came from that guy right there. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. I'll try to keep more videos up. Um, sorry I haven't made one lately, but I'm busy at work, so here's the tank.